Another shakeup in Iowa and establishment Republicans. Well, they're not real happy with this one. A new poll shows Ron Paul on top with 23 percent. Mitt Romney is three points behind him at 20 percent. Newt Gingrich has dropped to the third after losing 13 points in two weeks. The newts are on the slide. Republicans are getting nervous and they're pulling out all stops to prevent a Ron Paul victory. Chris Wallace kicked things off last week on Fox saying if Ron Paul won, it would discredit the caucuses. Iowa Republicans are echoing those remarks and the knives are coming out. The co-chair of Michelle Bachman's Iowa campaign said this about a Ron Paul victory. To see the process hijacked would be a concern for those who consider the honor we have of being first in the nation. Well, the Republican establishment sees Ron Paul, I guess you could say, as some kid in the back of the classroom with a smaller desk making a lot of noise and they just have to deal with him so they can move on. They don't like Ron Paul. They don't want him. And they're afraid that he'll run as a third party candidate if he just gets enough support around the country. They're trying to shut him up, discredit him any way they can, and it sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? Republicans don't like democracy unless their guy wins. They're trying to shut Democrats up with voter suppression laws in states across this country. But the thing about democracy is sometimes your candidate loses. And I didn't hear Republicans complaining about anybody hijacking the 2000 election back down in Florida. Remember those days? Ron Paul is the only candidate on the Republican side who has been consistently rising in the polls since day one. He hasn't had the big dip, the big gaffe. His values have been in line with the Tea Party since, well... Since before there was a Tea Party, establishment Republicans riled up the Tea Party last year to win back the House, and it worked. Now they have to deal with the beast they created, which may be a Ron Paul victory in Iowa. For more, I'm joined by Eric Burns, Democratic strategist and founder of Bullfight Strategies. Great to have you with us, Eric. Thanks for having uh, me back. Uh, why are why what's the big deal? You know, it, why are they trashing Ron Paul? Do they not want him part of the flock? Do, what, what's going on here? What no, do you make look, of it? Uh, of course, they don't want him part, as part of the flock. They see him as kind of an interloper from the far right. And you know, I would say in past years he was kind of considered the Lyndon Larouche. Of, of the right wing with obviously a much more serious following. But what's changed this year, uh, unlike past years where Ron Paul has run, and I've talked to several Republican consultants about this, is that he actually has an organized ground game uh, in Iowa and other states, which he's never really done before. And I think, you know, with all of the, uh, the topsy-turvy nature of this primary, people didn't really realize that this guy could really have a groundswell and actually have an yeah. organization on the ground to win. One of his big qualities, from what I'm hearing from my sources in Iowa, is that he's so non-threatening. I mean, when you when you meet Ron Paul, he's good at retail politics. He's just an, one of the nicest guys in the room, and yes. you can't hold a grudge against the guy. Although Iowa Governor Terry Branstad had this to say about the Iowa caucuses. People are going to look at who comes in second and who comes in third. I mean, is this strategy uh, of pretending Ron Paul doesn't exist, is this going to work for the Republicans? Um, I, I don't know that it will. I mean, because I feel like, you know, Ron Paul might be unique in this situation. Uh, you know, historically, the only person that's ever won the Iowa caucus and then gone on to win the presidency is George W. Bush. But with Ron Paul, if he were to actually pull this off and win this caucus, we would really force the media to take him seriously. And it's going to really put a damper on the plans of folks like Rick Perry uh, and, and Michelle Bachman, especially, whose campaign will essentially be over. She's put everything she has into Iowa. And considering that he's running, you know, in the top three going into New Hampshire and South Carolina, you know, it, it creates a, yeah. a, a, a real a wrench in the works. Ron Paul still trails Newt and Mitt Romney nationally, but he's uh, the only other really candidate that's in double digits. Washington Post ABC yes. News poll, Newt at 30, Romney at 30, Ron Paul at 15. Uh, does he have a chance beyond Iowa? What do you think? Um, I think it's I think it's tough. You know, I think, look, this is a different Republican Party than we've dealt with five years ago. All the establishment folks I talked to say Romney, Romney, Romney. But, you know, that, that's what you were talking about earlier. They're kind of they're trying to put the fix in. Uh, and, you know, I've been saying for a long time that, you know, with, that uh, they may the Repu this Republican Party may be surprised. Yeah. Uh, and what the grassroots do. It, so, you know, you know, you know the, the people that are being attracted to Ron Paul are, uh, I think, obviously greater in numbers than the last time that he's run for president. 
But there's this 20-something and 30-something movement that is out there in this country that they're socially liberal, they're fiscally responsible, and they think that they can take care of themselves down the road and they don't need any 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 help at all or any kind of program at all or you know, you know what I mean? I mean they're they're, yes. they're, they're he's tapping into something new, isn't he? Well, no, he absolutely is. And, and a lot of his, you know, a lot of his critics will say, well, you know, his vote really depends on the youth vote, but if you look at what he did, uh, you know, at the, at, you know, the straw poll and in Iowa in August, you know, he, he did very, very well there, I think coming in second to, uh, uh, to Bachman, if I'm not mistaken, and yeah. he did that without any college students in school. So I think these college kids have proven, these young people have proven that they will turn out for Ron Paul. Well, He's got a very, very serious following, and I think that could really prove a factor in this. Well, they defeated Hillary Clinton in Iowa. I mean, the young kids yep. got out for Barack Obama. I think there's a real parallel between the two candidates as far as Absolutely. demographics are concerned. The question is, Ron Paul now, is his ego big enough? You don't see, you don't see the ego in him when he's, when he's out working with people, but is his ego big enough to maybe fuel a third party candidacy? I, I think it might be, and I'll tell you this time, the reason why that is because you know he, he's never put together a serious uh, field operation before, and clearly he made a decision with his campaign that he was going to do that. It's been yeah. working for him. Uh, and I think that if he can if he can really come out as, uh, you know, and win this thing and then show in New Hampshire, uh, then yeah, I think you could yeah. possibly have a serious campaign. How long is it going to take for the Republicans to start trashing his son in the Senate, Rand Paul? Well, <laughs> you know, Not well, only is Ron wrong, but you know, Rand, we got to take care of him too, even though he's in the Senate. I mean, this is, I mean, they yeah. are out to get this guy off the map and out of the way and move somebody in from the establishment. Eric Burns, great to have you with us tonight. Thank Good you. to have you back with us.